morning. My name is Victoria Sabia, back with you here on The Breakfast Meeting. I hope you are doing well because we're going to have quite an interesting uh, conversation. For today, I shall refer to myself as a proper Gen Z, okay, because it's going to work for me today. We're going to be diving into a topic that has become increasingly important, uh, mental health, especially among our youth. Uh, we're joined by three of the co-founders of Jump Stress, a youth-led non-profit organization uh, making some waves uh, with uh, raising awareness on mental health awareness rather than educating young people on stress management. Uh, they've got an exciting conference that's uh, coming up this Friday actually uh, at uh, Nakawa ICT and we're here to get all the details and yes of course so let's uh, hear what the young people have to say concerning uh, stress management, mental health, and all those uh, stuff that we, I guess, we all at some point in our lives struggle with. Uh, to talk, to have that conversation with me rather today, I'm going to be welcoming Linus, Ethan, as well as Joshua. Welcome, gentlemen, uh, to the Thank breakfast you meeting. Uh, you make me feel young just a little bit and, and I'm glad to have you here to educate me a little bit but before we get into that uh, I'd love for you to just introduce yourself tell me what you do uh, and uh, what really inspired to you to co-found Jump Stress so we can go ahead and start with you Linus. Um, so I'm Linus I'm 18 years old, 18 years old. I attended I attend St. Paul's school which is a boarding school in um, New Hampshire um, and really what inspired me to join Jump Stress is I looked at what I was offered at St. Paul's School. I was offered this program called Link, which focuses on stress management. And then I come here and I don't see that those same offerings to mm. kids who are at schools. So I want to be able to bring that here to Uganda. Sounds good. Uh, how about you, Josh? Um, so hello, my name is Josh. I'm 17 years old. Um, I'm a student at St. Paul's School in New Hampshire as well. And what really inspired me is my love for studying the brain. We've learned that stress is a precursor for a lot of other issues like physical health and other mental health diseases. So if we can help prevent stress, we can help prevent a lot of those things like down the line. Absolutely, Ethan? Hello, good morning. My name is Ethan. I'm also going to my last year of high school. Um, I attend St. Paul's School in New Hampshire. Um, what really inspired me was that, um, to pick up what Josh said, stress is really a precursor for a lot of issues like homelessness, addiction, um, and I've, I've seen a lot of that throughout my life. And I want to figure out how to combat that. Mm -hmm. Let, let's get into that and talk about your lives in particular. Uh, was there any uh, specific uh, event or uh, happening in your life that brought up this idea of jump stress and how to deal with your mental health, how other young people are dealing with it? I know you just mentioned that you're fascinated about the brain. Uh, you know, you've seen uh, uh, other offerings uh, for you when it comes to your own mental health. Uh, is there any personal experience for yourself uh, that you might like to share uh, that also led to uh, the founding of Jump Stress? Uh, let's go ahead, Ethan. Right, so just piggyback off of my inspiration, my um, grandfather suffers from Alzheimer's and my grandmother's always told me he never got any sleep because he's always been very stressed. Um, he's, he migrated from Chile and moved to the U.S. when he was um, middle-aged and he really worked himself, um, didn't get a lot of sleep and that's why I believe he has Alzheimer's now, definitely a big precursor for stress. Mm -hmm, so. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Josh, do you have any story? And so within my own community, so I'm from Canarsie, Brooklyn, where like there's definitely a, a lot of people that are like in pretty impoverished or like don't have access to like the best schooling. And that's really stressful, like economic stressors, like academic stressors all play a part. And you can see it in the youth. Like, for example, there's a lot of violence. There's a lot of even like drug abuse in those areas mm -hmm. because people are stressed. And stress is really the leading factor in all of those regards. So Absolutely. Um, Linus? Um, for me, I think it was just an accumulation of just stress and things that are happening in my life. Mm -hmm. I think when I was really little, I, I had stress even from whether it's like parental pressures or me feeling that I have to achieve some type of goal. And then from there, I noticed that it wasn't just me feeling stress, it was everybody. Mm -hmm. And that kind of made me feel that this is the time to bring this stress-related issue to the mm -hmm. forefront. 
I guess that brings me then to the part of uh, some myths, perhaps, that we might like to uh, bust today. A lot of people might think, uh, you're young. What stress do you have? What do you mean you're stressed? What do you mean you're anxious? What do you mean you have a bit of depression? Um, and especially around Africa, I think a lot of people can look down upon any young person saying that they are stressed or they're struggling with any emotional or mental health issues. Um, what would you say to that in particular? Are there any myths that need to be bust? And if, if young people are stressed, are they really? Right. In your opinion, Ethan? I think that stress is re definitely real. I don't think it should be undermined. Um, not only do students face academic pressure, but they also face economic pressure, familiar pressure. Um, so there's a lot of different components that play into it that I think should definitely be considered. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Go ahead, Josh. People, I think people also need to be aware that stress is like a natural process. Like in your brain, you have a part called your prefrontal cortex mm -hmm. and you have another part called your amygdala. And your amygdala takes over when you're stressed and the amygdala basically um, is your emotional response. So when people are stressed, you see like that's why they're more prone to like start snapping quicker mm -hmm. because your emotions are taking over. So it's really a natural response. It's not something like that's just made up or we're kind of just using as an excuse. Yeah. It's real, so yeah. I think that's important. I think do, people do think that we're using that as an excuse. Yeah. Uh, your thoughts, Linus? Um, again, really to pick you off that last point about it being an emotional reaction, I think that stress, since that is an emotional reaction, it's not something that's fake, and stress, there's even evidence of stress going on mm -hmm. for thousands of years, and I think that right there shows how real it is, because it's not only in humans, it's in, it's in animals, it's in everything that you see. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why it's, it shouldn't be seen as stigmatized, instead it should be embraced and we should find ways to deal yeah. with it. In, in your experience, Alina, so when you're looking at other younger people, uh, your pe perhaps uh, uh, your colleagues at school, um, how does stress come across for them in your, when you're looking at it? And they don't notice, perhaps. Is it um, in the way that they behave? Uh, is it in the way that they ha perhaps respond emotionally to certain things? Uh, what is it that you have observed, rather? Um, just from like what I can observe from my peers, is stress comes in all types of ways. Maybe it's finals week, and maybe they'll be stressed about a test, a quiz, and that may affect their sleep schedule. Or maybe for, maybe for me sometimes, I'm stressed about maybe a game coming up the next day, maybe a performance, mm -hmm. maybe a presentation. Mm -hmm. And that stress affects not only my sleep, it could affect my eating habits, it could affect somebody's, even as Josh mentioned, mm -hmm. their angerness, their fuse, all, all these different factors are affected by the amount of stress that they're dealing with. Mm -hmm. You spoke about sports there a little bit. Is, uh, uh, is having a larger schedule a lot more stressful? Um, I think obviously the more you have on your plate, it will be it will cause stress. But at the same time, there's some things that may be on your plate that may be stress relievers. Mm -hmm. Like for me, when I exercise, it's a stress reliever. It calms me down. Maybe if I am stressed, I'll go exercise to then calm me down. So I think it's a, it's important to balance the work you have to do and just those little things that take away your stress, mm -hmm. ease you a bit, and having a nice mix between that. What are those stress relievers, in your opinion, uh, that uh, could help some uh, young students out there who are thinking, I'm very stressed and I don't have an outlet? Uh, I, what I've noticed with younger people is just it's not that easy to talk about what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, do you perhaps have any other uh, ways that people can relieve uh, their stress or even their anxiety in any kind of way, Joshua? At least for me personally, and I would recommend this to other people as well, one thing I do is I play saxophone. And when you get good enough to a point where you can start playing all the songs you want and you can like improvise, like it's really just a great outlet to kind of just like express yourself. Because I feel like a lot of times young people are stressed because they don't have the ability to express themselves mm -hmm. in creative ways. So if you find a creative outlet like that, like it could take away from a lot of your stress. It could take your mind just off of all the things in your life that are stressing you out, so. Very fascinating saxophone. We've got sports saxophone, how about you, Ethan? I think that stress is comprised of a lot of different uh, components, so you're focused on a lot of things at once, and I think one thing that I use is music therapy. So it's, I think listening to music kind of hones you in on focusing on one thing and not worrying about all the other different components mm -hmm. um, that you're facing. Yeah, um, let's talk about the conference. Sounds exciting. Um, Tell me about the concept, the inception of it. Uh, what brought up to uh, host a conference like this? Ethan, you can go ahead and start off with it. So our conference is going to mainly, or kind of like our scheduling, mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. is going to begin with faith-based leaders um, introducing the conference, and then we will have an impactful speech from Professor Bantu. Um, and then we will have, our co-founders will have panel discussions um, and kind of presentations to educate uh, about stress. And we will also be hosting scenarios mm -hmm. um, that kind of replicate stress happening in teens and young adults and how you can best manage that. Yeah. So. Uh, Josh, can you tell me perhaps about uh, the response of people here in Uganda um, uh, to jump stress and to also the conversation on mental health mm -hmm. and so on? I think for the most part, the response has been very positive. Um, if you check out our website, you could find like our Instagram and other social medias. And I feel like people in the comments have been very supportive. And um, uh, especially we did some interviews with all of us personally. And people have been really responsive. People seem to have learned a lot of things from that. So we kind of just want to continue that. We kind of want to continue the engagement and really just kind of push it out there that stress is important and that uh, it needs to be advocated for. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And are there any specific topics uh, that you're particularly going to get into at the conference that uh, some people might have to look out for? Uh, please, uh, Linus, if you could. Um, I guess I think a big topic is going to be stress and the stress relief. But also, um, our conference is targeted towards adolescents, but we also do invite parents, teachers, any adults in the community, because stress isn't just something that affects adolescents, it affects everybody. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we're not only offering stress strategies, things like that, to, to adolescents, also for the adults, there's a parent panel, an adult panel, where they can learn some more in-depth, just facts and information about stress. Mm -hmm. Your parents must be proud of you. Uh, if I might add, <laughs> uh, considering uh, co-founding this particular, I mean, you're solving a, a very a, a big problem mm -hmm. uh, and uh, there is a big need for this conversation to continue because uh, uh, we've been talking, but uh, we're not seeing, it's the first time I'm seeing younger mm -hmm. people actually spearheading it for uh, the adolescents. So tell me, like you're saying, people that are invited are, are they people from your school only or is it everybody? Who specifically is invited to the conference? Um, anybody can sign up. Um, if you want to sign up, you can go to our website, register straight there, but we're happy to open it to everybody. This conference is for the community, for everybody involved to come and attend, learn, and hopefully takes at least one strategy mm -hmm. home to them and be able to use it in their everyday life. Um, Josh and Ethan, if you could answer, how do you expect, or rather, what is the vision of this at the end of the day, in the next three, five years, what do you hope that this conference uh, will achieve, and are you planning on having more conferences like these and other, uh, perhaps, events? Uh, you can go ahead. So I'll take the first half of that question. Yes. I think in the next three to five years, the goal is really to just get as many people educated about like the intricacies of stress as we can, and also kind of just to spread the word we also want to um, kind of like break the stigma of like stress and um, mental health and just make people know that it's a natural thing and that with a few simple methods, it can be very easily prevented. And um, hopefully like in the future in schools around the world, we could get more like help and advocacy from maybe professionals as well, because we're not really professionals, but we can hopefully advocate for the professionals to be in schools and be just in all places so people can really feel supported. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right, I really want to emphasize that we are not experts. We are teenagers. We just want to make that bridge and to connect students that need stress management techniques to um, hire um, knowledgeable individuals. Um, our goal is to really network um, and just like Josh said, just spread awareness. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. And then I guess I'll just answer like the second half as well yes. about like future events. I think we plan on having um, a lot more future events just because if you just have one event and stop, like you kind of, even though you've probably educated some people and raised awareness in some way, I think you still need to do more to like, you know, keep continuing and keep honing it in because stress is something that you can't solve just in one day or mm -hmm. one conference. Like mm -hmm. it takes months upon months upon years to like really resolve people's stressors and other issues like that. So I think yeah. multiple conferences will definitely be in the future. Let's bring it back home. It, please go ahead, Linus, if you could say. Um, oh, I was just going to hop go, hop on top of that part for Josh. I think even at the one uh, conference, the job's not finished. I think you need to keep on going forward. You need to keep on working on what's next. And I think that's really what our goal is. Also, our goal is to reach out to some schools 
and then give them a similar format or a similar thing like the ones we were introduced to at our school mm -hmm. to be able to, for the teachers and adults in those schools to be able to then pass stress techniques and stress tactics to the students at the school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I want you guys to kind of talk to the people who are watching, parents, the students, and one person is probably thinking, I don't know what stresses me and is asking, what really stresses you? Bring it back home practically, like what really stresses you? Um, who want that answer and motivate them to actually come over to the conference if you could. Uh, and I want all of you to answer. Uh, what stresses them? What stresses you? Uh, and speak to them to come to the conference. Start, can I start with you, Ethan? Sure. Yeah? So I think that our conference will definitely be very helpful to understand, educate yourself. Um, I think it'll be a fun experience um, listen to a lot of different people speak. It's not every day you get to attend this conference, mm -hmm. and I think it'll definitely be beneficial, so I don't see why not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I think some of the stressors, like some things that personally stress me out are definitely like academic pressures and like pressures in sports. And I think for a lot of people as well, like maybe financial pressures, familial pressures, they all play a role in stressing you out. Like mm -hmm. all those things, especially when they combine together, can be lethal to like your like stress management. So I think like those are definitely like some of the main stressors of mm -hmm. most people. Mm -hmm. I think for me, um, I've experienced similar pressures, but also I experienced pressures for maybe actions I've done. Maybe I think back on why did I do that? What mistake did I make? But at the same time, I worry about the future. I worry about the unknown. I wonder, hey, what's gonna happen here? And I think this is that, those are just the reasons that people should attend the conference, is that stress can come in all these different ways, types, it comes in all different shapes and sizes. Yet at the same time, I feel that it has to be embraced and has to be questioned. That's really why we want you to come. There's gonna be a network of adolescents for people to talk to and things like that. And that's really why we feel that this Jump Stress Conference is mm -hmm. the place to be. Absolutely. I mean, I for one would probably encourage the parents to show up as well because I think when I was young, my major uh, stressor was probably pressure from my parents uh, to be a certain type of person. So it's a good conversation to have between mm -hmm. the parents and uh, their kids, basically, and find out what is happening. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank, Thank you. you. Tell me the website. Tell me how can we register and how are we get into the conference. Um, so the website, it, it's called jumpstress.org, if you just look that up. And in there, there should be a top bar. You'll be able to see a part called event, click event, and that's where you'll be able to register. Um, and then, if you, obviously, you may not be able to attend. Maybe you have a meeting. Maybe you're just not able to go. Maybe you have work. If that's the case, it will be streamed live here, as well as it will be posted on YouTube. So whatever you missed out, even if you maybe just missed 30 minutes, you can go back, watch that, and hopefully retain all the information that we have to offer. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And thank you for watching. I hope that you do take this conversation very seriously. If you have kids in your house, maybe your teens that are in high school or even in primary, you're wondering about their mental health, you're wondering about their state. If they're doing well, listen, this is a conference for you to take them to. The Jump Stress Conference is happening on Friday at, at Nakawa ICT. Uh, so you can definitely register at the website which they've mentioned and get yourself there and be sure uh, that you take a part in that. But for me, Victoria Sabia, it's almost time to say goodbye. But I have to cross you over and let's have that conversation at, uh, at the FDC in Najana Kumbi faction where 